We rise before dawn and cry for help. We have put our hope in your word, Lord. We rise before dawn and cry for your help. So says Psalm 119, verse 147. It's a beautiful day. And just before dawn, as we get together in his name, <coughs> may his name be glorified. Holy Father, we commit this time to you. Your will, Lord. Your abundant blessings, Lord. It's all we want. Failures and talents and schemes we bring to you. Aspirations and dreams we bring to you. In the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We dwell on the fact that uh, he has promised. I dwell on the fact that I have been promised that all things work together for the good to those who love the Lord. I cannot be separated from the love of God. The good works that God has begun in me, he will be faithful to perfect them and complete them. Dwelling on these verses, I know that the special way in which he has created me, I have the right to ask him. I have the authority to be with him because I am his son. I am his child. Grace and mercy will see me through in every situation as long as I depend on him. Quickly going through what we had decided yesterday that the beginning of our prayer needs to be adoration. There were questions that came in yesterday. What exactly do you mean by adoration? So I'm just quickly going through some phrases, some uh, beautiful words that have been attributed to the Lord from the word. Quickly running through them. The, he's wonderful. He's the counselor. He's the prince of peace. He's the eternal God. He is the rock of ages. He's the king of glory. The king of kings He's a mighty God. He's the Lord of lords. He's the Lord of hosts. He's the lily of the valley. He's the healer. He's the deliverer. He's the provider. He's the creator. He's the potter. He's the day star. He's the cornerstone. He's my savior. He's the I am that I am. He's the wisdom. He is, <clears throat> sorry, he's the protector. He's the rock of my salvation. He's a shield. He's a merciful God. He's the Lamb of God. He's a sustainer. He's the convincer. So what are we supposed to do when we look at this? There are hundreds and hundreds of, of names attributed to the Word of God. When we, when we start the, the, our prayer, we need to look at this and see that He is the restorer. He's the light of the world. He's the way. He's the truth. He's the life. He's the way maker. He's the composer. He's the author. He's the finisher. He's, he's a He's a, he's, a, he's a God that does not sleep. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's omniscient. So I leave that. You got the gist of it. There's so many more names attributed to the word, with the name of our Lord. And we need to bring that first to him. That he is our God. And adoration is taking stock of all these things and realizing who my father is, who my creator is, and who's the one who has a, who's appointed me into this world, the Alpha and the Male, the beautiful God, our refuge, our fortress, our buckler, our banner. Oh, names and names that are so beautiful. So that is how we start a prayer. And today, as we very specially look into another part of the promises, let us Commit to him, let us submit to him in his holy name.
really with us. God will take care of you. Bible reading from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verses 2 to 4. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and to test you, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Your garments did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these 40 years. Praise be to God. As we continue to reflect on what Paul wrote to the Philippians, we find that this is probably the loveliest letter he's written. And when somebody writes letters, he reveals his own soul. And these letters reveal Paul's character. We seem to know him very well as we read. Because he opens his mind and his heart to the folk he loved. And we also see a great mind grappling with the problems of the early church and a heart throbbing with love. As you know, when you look at the life of Paul, you realize that he had the eye of a strategist, identified important key points, like, you know, he chose road centers, railway stations, and therefore Philippi was very important. He first came, went there in AD 52 and because he was urged by a vision by a man of Macedonia, sailed from Alexandrian Troas in Asia Minor, landed in Neapolis in Europe, then to Philippi. And we read all about this in Acts 16. And when he left Philippi, it was after persecution, illegal imprisonment. And what he was sharing with the Philippian church as he wrote from prison in Rome, was actually a letter of thanks to them, but also a letter of encouragement and a letter of appeal. And therefore, at the end of that letter, he writes, My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19. I'll read that again. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I mentioned what led to this letter to make us understand the enormity of the promise he makes that despite persecution, illegal imprisonment, and all the struggles he went through, his concern for the people of Philippi makes him give this promise that my God will supply 
all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. As we reflected yesterday, the philosophy of prayer includes taking everything to God in prayer like a child. And as we do with children, we allow them to say whatever they want to. We love the way they open out themselves. We can do the same with our Father God. The philosophy of prayer also is thanksgiving. And it's a Christian's life suspended between the past and the present blessings. Despite all the problems that happen with it, let's start thinking of it as a time for thanksgiving because our lives are suspended between the past blessings, the present blessings, and the future blessings. And we were taught yesterday of two things, that there is gratitude and there is submission. So that when we pray, we remember that the love of God desires the best for us. The wisdom of God knows the best for us. And the power of God brings to pass that which is the best for us. Just reflect on what happened when Jesus was at the place where Lazarus had been buried. St. John's Gospel, chapter 11 and verse 32 onwards. That beautiful reading. And in verse 41, he says, Father, I thank you that you have already heard me. And therefore, even as he wept, seeing the sorrow of people around him, even as he was concerned for Martha and Mary and all the loved ones, he knew that his father had heard him. And so he says in verse 41, Father, I thank you that you have already heard me. And therefore, Paul promises us in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19, that my God shall supply all my need, all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now, three things we notice here. He says, my God. He's so confident about the God of all possibilities taking care of his need, our every need. Not our wants, but our needs. All our need. And then he says, according to his riches in glory by and through Christ Jesus. If you look back, it's in Mark's Gospel, chapter 1. There are two beautiful verses there, verse 7 and verse 11. Verse 7 is the time when John the Baptist identifies Jesus as the person going to take over with the task given to him by God. And in verse 11, so there's the identification, in verse 11 is the attestation where from above, the Holy Spirit says, this is my beloved son in whom I am, I am fully pleased, completely pleased. So it is with this confidence that Paul assures the people of Philippi that my God should supply all my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. In Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 2 to 4, we read how God enabled his people as he led them for 40 years, he says, to humble you, to prove you, to know your heart and whether you will keep my commandments. Supplying everything, not by bread alone, but giving all the manner that they needed. Their clothes were taken care of, their feet were taken care of. Every part of us, God will take care of us. And so as we pray, we remember that our God, that my God, shall supply all our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I have been bought with a price. My God sent his son into this world to die on the cross for me. I belong to him. And when he went to back into heaven I was given the comforter the direct access to the Holy Spirit 
I have been redeemed, I have been forgiven, I have been preserved, I have been restored, I have been pardoned, and I have been appointed. Let us pray and commit ourselves to the Lord. Gracious, loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for these beautiful moments. We thank you that you've enabling us, you're enabling us to reconnect with you, enabling us to remember and realize that without you, we are nothing and we are here only for you, Lord. Father, we thank you for the words that we heard today, Lord. You have always said at in Philippians 4.19, which says, my God shall supply all our needs. So we come today morning with thanksgiving. We come today morning with gratitude and submission. Father, we have erred on our ways. If any of us are going through the valley experience in the last one, one and a half years, be encouraged by today's verses that if we are going through this valley, it is only a time where God wants us to humble ourselves, to reconnect ourselves with him. Because as we heard, he desires the best for all of us. His love for us, his wisdom for us, the power of God desires the best for each one of us. So, we Lord, today morning we submit each one of us, Lord, into your hands for all our challenges, for all our failures that we think that are failures, for all the sorrows, for all the joy and happiness that we have had. We want to give you all the glory. Father, we realize, Lord, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. You're always, always there with us. Help us to continually walk in your ways. Help us to know who you are, Lord. We thank you, Father, for this time. In Jesus' name, pray. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Let us place our lives at his feet. He is our Father who loves us. He knows. But from within, we need to take count of where we stand, what we have done, what we are doing. And then and then only will we have a perfect, intimate relationship with him. Confess. Confess. May the Spirit of the Living God fall upon us and give us the grace and the courage to look back at our lives and see that nothing is permanent as long as we are bringing our sins for forgiveness to the feet of our dear Father, our Abba Father, who is in heaven. And as we thank him for the fact that we know that all these challenges, all these different things that we have gone through have been part of our, our honing, our maturing. Let's bless the Lord as, 
the child of a father who loves us so deeply. Everything is overshadowed by the love of my God. He upholds me. He uplifts me. He gives me a purpose and a plan. So Lord, help me find my way. Help me find my way. I was lost. But in your name, I am found always. I trust you. I need you to help me, Lord. And may my faith grow. Teach me, Lord, to have faith in you. Teach me, Lord, to love you more. Teach me, Lord, to be guided by you and you alone. I bring my family before you, Lord. The fourth member of my family. Bless and lead. May the blood of Jesus purify and bless. May no evil come anywhere near. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for the complete well-being of my family that the health is restored. I'm praying for that one person that we brought before you right in the beginning of these prayers. You need to restore the health of that one person that we have placed before you. We need to hear that there is complete restoration. Heal, Lord because you have promised that you are the God that heals. Your healing power is so, so great that nothing can come anywhere near that. Help me to believe that through it all, I will come out victorious because I'm a conqueror. Pray especially today, Father, for our needs. Many of us in different ways struggling for your provision. Lord, we believe that you will supply all our needs from the abundant riches of your glory I will lack nothing in your name. The tables will lack no food. We rebuke the spirit of debt that has messed up many a family, many a home. And from the reservoir of your financial abundance, we pray, Lord, that you give wisdom to each one of us to really and truly use the wealth that you've given us, the provisions that you have given us, to be able to use it to the best, to secure our finances from the evil one, that no temptation makes us mess with all that you have given us. You're the source of all wealth. You will take care of all our needs. 
that in our greed we mess up many a time, Lord. Pray that you forgive and make us prosperous in our hearts through your grace. Help us to grow in a spirit of oneness in our family, Lord. May there be complete discernment in all the members of the family. That your will, your blessing, your leading, your guidance will be the ultimate boundary of our even basic thoughts. We pray for our parents. We pray for divine health for each one of them. We pray for comfort. We pray that they are strengthened in your spirit. And Lord, give us the strength and the guidance to be able to take away all the fears, all the feelings of failures and frustration from our children. That we are able to encourage them, that they, we are able to give them the, the joy that comes from knowing that you will supply all our needs. We bless you, Lord, that we are able to bless our children in a way that we relieve their stress, that we are able to see that all the fears are diffused completely and that they are free. The chains that hold them down have to fall away, Lord. As a family, let the boundaries that we are setting, the cocooning that we are setting just because you have been loving us so dearly, may it be the hedge that you put around us, Lord. Help us to remember that there is a right and there is a wrong, that as we grow in your spirit, we need to be honest and our integrity need to, needs to increase with our riches. Help us remember that you have promised and it will come to pass. Today, let us especially remember the people who are here in this group who are looking for alliances for either yourself or for people in the family. It will come to pass. It will happen. It is time. In his time, it will be made beautiful. We're praying today, Lord, that emotions are healed Knowledge is imparted. Relationships are restored. And most of all, when we are struggling to try and understand, help us to have faith, to remember that you, need, you know best. You know what's best for us. We are pouring out our spirit, our soul, to you, our loving God. We have been moved to confession by the Holy Spirit. We have been convicted by the grace of God to believe that you are in command. We place this day before you. This whole day we are going to Remember very clearly that you will supply all our needs because there's bountiful riches with you. The earth is yours and the fullness thereof. We bless you, Lord. Give us a great day today. Ask and pray in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we continue, um, just need to quickly tell you a few things. One is that you will see on your screens five different rooms that you can go in for more prayer if you so desire, if you feel like it. You just have to press that 
button and you will be led to uh, the different prayer groups that are there. Uh, we, you, if you can see that, uh, you can go to any of the rooms and uh, decide where you want to go to. Uh, but quickly, uh, a couple of other things. Those who want to stay here and listen to prayer music and pray along, you're welcome to. Um, thank you for being with us, day five. Uh, tell us if there's anything that you would like to tell us. Tell people uh, about it and invite them. Um, some people have asked what, what a prayer journal is all about. So those of you who would like to know more about it, you can just um, uh, either click into our uh, group uh, with the uh, link that is being provided, or you can just send us your name and number and we'll get you into the group and we'll be giving details of how to maintain a prayer journal. So thank you very much for being with us this morning. We pray that all of us are blessed, all of us are enriched in this new fellowship that is there, the fellowship of prayer, the fellowship of his love. Thank you. So if you, those of you want to go uh, into any of these rooms, you're welcome to. Uh, others, uh, it's fine. Uh, you can decide if you want to. Thank you very much.
as mentioned before, if you would like to join a breakout room, uh, just click an option which should pop up on your screen right now. Uh, otherwise, you, you don't have to feel compelled to join a group. We'll just be playing some music here. Oh, yes, we have.